Beulah George, better known as Georgia Tan, was born in Philadelphia, Mississippi. Georgia came from a powerful family, being that her father was a judge. She wanted to follow in his footsteps, but he forbade it. She instead pursued a career in social work. She was soon fired from her social worker job for inappropriately removing children from impoverished homes without a cause. In her mind, low-class families didn't deserve to have children, and that was the driving force of her dark decisions to come. She adopted a woman named Ann Atwood Hollingsworth, who was believed to be her same-sex partner. This was a woman who was also an accomplice to her actions. Tan ended up having her corrupt father land her a job as an executive secretary at the Memphis branch of the Tennessee Children's Home Society. In the 1920s, adoption began to skyrocket due to its market as a shortcut to improving society. An ad was even placed by the National Home Finance Society promising that adoption would in fact reduce divorce, banditry, unaliving, and control births and fill all the churches. Of course, a woman like Georgia Tan took full advantage of desperate, greedy women who couldn't have babies, especially hardworking single women and rich families. She set her sights on the rich and famous, including actress Joan Crawford, who adopted four children from her. Her story would later turn into a blockbuster hit called Mommy Dearest, where the adopted children recalled not having the best life with her. What makes this worse is, Tan had eyes and ears all over the state of Mississippi, literally. She was in cahoots with all sorts of police, doctors, lawyers, and other public figures. One of her most notable accomplices was a judge named Camille Kelly. She would abuse her authority by taking parental rights from birth mothers and give them to Tan. One notable case was a woman named Cindy Lou Presto who was two years old when she was snatched from her mother. Her birth mom, Evelyn, never knew her daughter was kidnapped and was baffled when she received a call from the juvenile court asking Evelyn to sign papers for Cindy's adoption. She refused and Judge Kelly overruled her and took Cindy from her birth mother. Cindy was luckily able to reunite with her birth mother 32 years later. This sort of corruption didn't come free though. Georgia Tan would pay a pretty penny for her so-called spotters to tell her things like when families apply for assistance because this indicated that they were poor and couldn't care for the children. Another accomplice she had was a man named Boss. He was a powerful politician and he offered her protection. She preyed on families that couldn't fight back, offering medical help and other necessities. She would show up in her luxurious black car and drive through poor neighborhoods seeking children and ask if they wanted to go with her. She would get people to kidnap children from preschools, playgrounds, churches, so nothing was off limits. Her spotters would alert her when they saw children walking home from school. At the time, adoption cost $7, which in today's money will be about $75. Of course, Georgia Tan was greedy, so she tripled the cost at $1,000 per child, which would be about $10,000 in today's time. As you can imagine, the conditions in Tan's orphanage was less than peaceful. A woman named Peggy recalls her mother, Norma Sue, and her five siblings were kidnapped from the yard in 1943 while their mother was sick in the hospital. Her mother was older, about eight years old, and was used as free labor to help take care of the babies, such as feeding and changing diapers. She refused to be part of her so-called new family and never accepted it. Georgia placed ads in newspapers to sell children as if they were property. The newspaper ads would read things like, they like to be yours on Christmas, and Nancy needs a home. Can you say no? By the 1940s, she was doing baby raffles in which you could raffle 20 to 30 babies for the price of $25, which in today's time will be $350. She became more and more bold when she created a baby catalog showing potential adopters their would-be perfect child with perfect features. If you were a blonde-haired, blue-eyed child, Tan would set these children at the highest prices. She didn't care who she sold to, and in fact, she was known to sell children to people of the opposite sex who were known pedos. She would even get a hold of teenagers around 16 years old and sell them to men. The children who came out and spoke against Tan would say how they were abused sexually by the people who adopted them. An adoptee even accused Georgia Tan himself as abusing him at the age of five. He recalls all the boys being taken advantage of in the orphanage. She would lie about the children's background and say they came from attractive parents who were doctors and lawyers to make them seem more appealing. Tan became more and more ruthless, stealing babies while the mothers had just given birth to them and telling them that they passed away. 
She would take these babies at only a few hours old and many babies pass away in her care. It is said that at least 500 children pass under her care and the infant mortality rate skyrocketed. She was said to drug the babies to keep them quiet and get rid of the less desirable ones if they weren't cute to her. She would leave them to waste away in the sun and place them in unmarked graves on the property. Unbelievably, her baby selling scam ran on for over 20 years and she was said to have sold more than 5,000 babies and ruined a substantial amount of lives. In the 1950s, her baby selling scam came at the end after being undebated for nearly two decades. Tennessee elected new governor Gordon Browning and this lessened the authority from corrupt politicians. Browning began to dig into Tan's past and found out she made about 11 million in today's money from her child trafficking. Tan never was punished for her crimes and died three years later from uterine cancer. Judge Kelly would resign after details began to emerge about her involvement in the crimes. She passed away five years later and was never punished for her crimes. The crooked legislators she was in cahoots with quickly changed their laws so the wealthy families who adopted children through Tan's orphanage couldn't be prosecuted. Tan did good by selling the adoption records and even the adoptees had to fight in court to obtain their birth certificate if born before 1951. The remaining children left at the Tennessee Children's Home Society were removed and placed in safe homes. The orphanage was closed for good in the 1950s. Many of the children sold were eventually reunited with their parents. Only less than 10% never found their birth parents. An interesting fact is that the wrestler Ric Flair was one of the children that was stolen by Georgia Tan. Not too many of them were as fortunate as Ric Flair and were unhappy with their adoptions. The adoptees said, they always felt a feeling of not belonging and sadness. There have been several books such as The Baby Thief and Before We Were Yours that told the stories of their adoptions. No criminal charges were ever brought to anyone involved in a baby selling scheme.